Hello everyone. In this video I wanted to talk about pelvic trauma in the elderly population. The reason to discuss this is because it's a, a common uh, situation in which we have an elderly patient with decreased bone mineralization and pelvic trauma. And the first message or the first point I want to emphasize is the fact that we cannot really exclude a pelvic fracture on an elderly patient uh, with just a plain radiograph and I think that's a, the most important message and although we cannot exclude it we uh, we always tend to obtain a pelvic radiograph based on the level of suspicion and most of the time radiographs are easily available and they make uh, for a good initial test but I can tell you as a radiologist you know the main thing for you to know if you're ordering one of these uh, exams or the pelvic series, the first thing you want to assess is the clinician ordering it. You want to assess for symmetry of the pelvic ring. Uh, you want to assess the sacroiliac joints and you want to look at the obturators and the superior pubic rami and inferior pubic rami, uh, symmetry of the symphysis pubis and remember that this is all one system. So you want to, if there's a fracture on one side, it will most likely create some disruption of this pelvic ring. Uh, so that's talking exclusively about the pelvis, but sometimes it's hard to distinguish between uh, the symptom from a pelvic fracture and a hip fracture. So like I said, people talk about all sorts of lines, but I think you need to really just focus on symmetry. You know, all those lines are made to uh, make you look at the symmetry in more detail. You know, you're looking at this line here and you follow it all along and then you compare it to the other side and you make sure they're fairly symmetric and that for example is the iliofemoral line but you don't need to know the name to be able to assess the symmetry on both sides. Uh, that being said, I want to point out this is a good exam because uh, this patient had a fracture and we're going to look at the CT scan to confirm those fractures but the first thing that uh, comes to, uh, you know, jumps out from this image is that we have a little vertical line here. Uh, and if I can convince you that that vertical line uh, definitely is not normal, it looks, uh, we see all the other lines and even compared to the contralateral side, they're more curved and smooth. Here there's, there's something odd about that line. So that already triggers uh, a level of suspicion with this film. And sometimes we have other areas that are obscure here by bowel gas. Uh, but if we look closely and sometimes we have to do some windowing to see things better, but Let's try to look closer here. So I'm going to zoom in and what we're seeing here, I'm going to draw some arrows to, for those of you that might have not seen the finding yet. So what we're seeing here, there's also disruption uh, here of that obturator uh, ring and here the, the symphysis. Uh, as we're looking at it, we have that line there and we can probably, if we window it better, we can also see uh, some additional lines there but I, I think most people will agree that there's a, a line here that's abnormal and then you know we noticed that it was first this vertical line that triggered the suspicion and then we looked at it mo more closely and then we have uh, another finding that's suspicious. The other thing once I already have a fracture anywhere really in the pelvis I always want to look at the hip uh, at the femoral head but also the acetabulum and then the acetabulum has a little bit of a more complicated anatomy for purpose of lines but you know the easy ones is really the acetabular roof you want to look at this uh, posteriorly try to imagine you're looking past the femoral head uh, so you're looking at those lines there make sure there's no disruption um, When people talk a lot about the lines here uh, specifically the teardrop uh, that might not be that easy to to find or to see in an uh, elderly patient with uh, arthritis and some changes positioning might not be ideal but you always look at, at those lines uh, another famous line is Shenton's line uh, which is really just looking at the undersurface here of the femoral head and kind of following it along you know you follow this symmetry it should go a little bit like this and uh, the same thing here you look on the other side and look for that symmetry but you know I already told you we identified a fracture here uh, but like I said we cannot exclude a, a hip fracture 
uh, based on a pelvic radiograph. And sometimes, I, I must confess, those fractures that are subtle uh, can be very easily missed because the sensitivity from, from a radiograph is, is not that great. And different uh, authors are gonna cite uh, a different number, but uh, it can be as high as, as uh, 25%, uh, if not more, of missed fractures on a simple uh, pelvic radiograph. So I think uh, the, the gold standard, it's safe to mention that the gold standard is already CT or MRI. Uh, MRI is the, the more sensitive uh, imaging modality, but for the sake of time is not always uh, either available or appropriate to uh, get the, the MRI as a, as a first line. So we're looking here at the axial images of the pelvis and we're gonna go and look at that area that we're seeing the fracture and we already see some disruption in this area. Um, and the other thing I wanted to show you that we don't see that well uh, on the regular radiograph is we have some disruption here of the anterior wall of the acetabulum. And I'm gonna draw some arrows again just to make it easier for everyone. So we have that there. Um, if you look closely, it's a little bit comminuted, so we have some additional areas here. This one's a lot more obvious, right? We have two uh, dense lines overlapping each other, so that, that one really uh, makes it a little bit more obvious. And uh, again, we're looking at the symphysis here. We have, sorry, I should say the inferior pubic rami and the, the pubic symphysis here. Uh, and we're seeing those lucencies that we saw on the x-ray. And then, then we look at the other side and we see something that catches our attention and we also have some cortical disruption there. So there's another, another fracture on that side. And I know for those of you that are not radiologists, it, it might be hard to see it on this axial projection. So the coronal uh, projection is a lot easier for some people to start learning uh, this type of images because they can really correlate with the radiograph. So let's go back to the radiograph, to the, to the view where we would expect to see that vertical line on the radiograph. And here you can see, you know, we have that fracture there. It's not identical to what we saw on the radiograph and that's normal. Sometimes, you know, the over overlapping structures that, that we see on radiograph uh, might present different here on CT because on CT we really only have one slice and we don't have the, the addition of, of multiple uh, lucencies or structures that might be projecting here. Uh, again, this is a little bit more subtle on this view. That's why it's always important to see it on, on all the views, but that's that pelvic uh, anterior wall of the acetabular uh, fracture. And, uh, you know, I think this is a pretty good summary. Obviously, we're always looking at the femoral head, femoral neck. Uh, in this case, we didn't see any fractures. However, if there's a strong uh, suspicion for an underlying hip fracture, even the CT scan should not be the endpoint. Probably if the patient continues to be symptomatic in, in the presence of a negative uh, CT, we should pursue a, a, an MRI to make the diagnosis, whether it is an insufficiency fracture uh, or some other type of trauma, it, it's definitely gonna be more uh, the evaluation with MRI is gonna be more sensitive. So I think that's all for this video, just to show you a really nice example of how a subtle finding on the x-ray prompted uh, additional imaging, and we saw several fractures. So no, not only the fracture of the inferior pubic rami, uh, inferior pubic ramus, I should say, because we're talking about one side, and then the anterior wall of the acetabulum on both sides, actually. So thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe. Feel free to ask some uh, questions down below. And uh, until next time, thank you very much.